Thanks for sticking around Upper Michigan today. We're continuing our conversation about Anita Myland and her lasting impacts on the Marquette arts and culture scene. Jack, you were just saying before we came back from break that Art on the Rocks specifically is an event that changed your life. And yeah. I, I'm sure it's changed a lot of artists' lives. Well, yeah, I, it was the first time I ever exhibited my photography. 1977, I was 25 years old. And it just ended up, I ended up opening up my own studio a year later in downtown Marquette, Superior View. And, you know, without that confidence of showing my work mm -hmm. and people going, wow, you're a good photographer, I would have never have taken that next step. Mm -hmm. At the same time, a studio went out of business that started me in history collecting, mm -hmm. too. But that would have never happened if I didn't have Art on the Rocks first. And that's the beginnings of so many people that are still, people at Zero Degrees Gallery, a lot of them started in Art on the Rocks. So, you know, Art on the Rocks was important. It's one of the oldest art shows uh, in, in Michigan, too. After Ann Arbor, I think we're one of the second oldest. But oh. I think we'll have some pictures of, of where it began out at the Father Marquette statue. I don't know. Oh, yeah, we can see that, that right there up on the street. That's actually a photograph wow. that was taken uh, of the first art show out there and in 1960 uh, that was in Time magazine it's the same photo only done in a painting and it was a, an ad for a northern gas company and uh, that kind of made Art of the Rocks famous that's a painting of a, when it was at Presque Isle and it was out there for many years uh, but we had to have buses to bring people out it was kind of a hard place to have a show it was hard for the artists too yeah, yeah. not a lot of parking and then there's where it is today because <laughs> there's more parking more restaurants but it's gone through these stages uh, over the years but it's just important and then these are just some more of Anita she was part of the uh, the knitting and the yarn winders too, right wasn't she? Oh. yeah she just if there was an art she was interested in learning it um, here she is, I think, at the Detroit Institute of Art. Yeah, she took a bus of busload of people down to the DIA to, to right. see a special exhibit down there. And look at how she's dressed. Yeah. <laughs> I love exactly. it. The pageantry. Always yeah. the hat. If you have a hat, you can wear on March 5th. Wear your hat on yes. March 5th. <laughs> and once again, uh, at that event, you're mm -hmm. asking people to dress in the way that Anita Milan would dress. Corsage, a hat fancy dress. <laughs> I mean, you don't have to. It's not mandatory. Right. But but we're going to talk more about that event um, in the next segment. But Jack, I kind of want to hear about what you think what you think contributes to the lasting success of Art on the Rocks in Marquette. Oh, yeah, it, it, it's just amazing. Yeah. Um, and how many people show up for it. We we did so much, f you know, made, that's how we made mm -hmm. our money, to support all the programs. You know, if you figure we've been around 67 years and if we just did six programs or workshops, mm -hmm. we, that means we've done 500 of them over the year. Uh, we used to donate to books at the library. All the art books that are in Peter White Library were from LSAA buying those after Art in the Rocks. So we still, now we have the scholarship. So it's not just launching artists, it's, mm -hmm. it's launching people that are going to go to college in the arts. And uh, so, yeah, it's amazing. And, and the fact that that show just brings in so many people to the town, too. And it's a juried art show, mm -hmm. which was the whole idea of Anita saying it's just not a craft show. We want artists to come from other states, and they do now. A lot of artists that are from Florida, they have several Michigan shows. Art on the Rocks is usually on that list. They'll come to Ann Arbor, they'll go to Petoskey, and they'll come up to Marquette. So how else do you get nationally renowned artists to come to Marquette mm -hmm. if you don't have an art show catered to them? So it's been a great boom for Marquette. Yeah, it draws in a lot. Well, and then art that. collectors come, mm -hmm. you know, because they want to see the show. So it's a major tourist boom to Marquette as well that it gets people coming to Marquette so they can see that show, see the Outback show, um, stay and purchase some art. And mm -hmm. so it's wonderful for Marquette, not just for the artists, but for all those motels you were talking about that are losing money this yeah. winter. You know, we hope they can make some of it up this summer. Right. And the art scene in Marquette is a big part of that. Lynn, what's, what's your take on the art scene in Marquette? How are you seeing it evolve or change through membership with the Lake Superior Art Association? And are you looking for more members? Do you find that your it's, it's, membership is dwindling at all? Well, after COVID, we were down to, I think, 34. Mm -hmm. And we're over 100 right now. Um, January is the month to renew, so if you haven't... Uh, send in an app. Well, you can join any time during the uh -huh. year, though. But if you're um, a young artist, this is, this is what we got to get, is more young artists that are part of this. I mean, that's how I got involved. Mm -hmm. We still need more coming in all the time. And right. it'll launch you. You know, if you're a painter or a potter or a woodworker, 
this can launch you you know being right honest. and we're this year we are doing um, art talks mm -hmm. and we hope to continue them which is more educational um, and we just had one on the group of seven um, artists from Canada and um, so we're, we're we have more of an educational um, focus coming up um, at some for some of our programs and um, oh we have a fiber artist this month we have a photographer the next month um, we're trying to diversify mm -hmm. um, the different types well, of visual I tried, arts. I tried to get into that group of seven. It and was you packed. Could, it was packed. You couldn't get in. It was standing room only and not even that. So yeah. there's a real appetite for learning mm -hmm. about the arts in town, too. Well, the, the video or DVD, the video we showed, um, the library is now ordered. That's so you'll good. be able to get the painted land, the story of the group uh, of seven. You can check it out from the library. Um, but I had downloaded it on my computer, and it's a beautiful, uh, in that Shiris room, it was just such a beautiful setting, and we were really not prepared um, for that <laughs> large of a crowd. Um, I think like 75 came. Oh. So thing. we're going to have the photography um, uh, program down in the community room. Um, I, that's March. A bigger room. 20-something. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's a good, good problem to have, and we we were getting more men in into that mm -hmm. um, presentation because of the nature and the hiking and the exploring and um, June Jamridge Parsons done a wonderful job promoting our programs and our events so um, we're trying to draw in more you know more diversified um, and you haven't seen audience. the show this mm -hmm. is just a teaser yeah right. I have a lot more photos to show in fact we have a movie of Art in the Rocks in 1959 Oh. I'm saving that for the next. <laughs> yeah, <so>. yeah. And, <laughs> this, and this event, I mean, how can you lose with these two yeah. wonderful presenters and photographs? I mean, you know, mm -hmm. and a cash bar. And a cash bar. <laughs> well, incredible appetizers. We're going to leave on that cliffhanger of incredible appetizers. <laughs> and we'll talk more about that and what you can expect at this event about Anita Milan coming up on March 5th when we come back from the break.